Today, I'm gonna to be walking through step-by-step step how to build this super simple question and answer AI agent. Like it says right there, no code. Basically, this agent is going to take information you give it, so information about a company, large database, whatever it might be, and then you're gonna be able to chat with it to get the answers you need quicker than if you were to manually have to search through a document or multiple documents. So I wanted to start off here with just a quick demo so you guys know what it's gonna look like and what it's gonna do before we actually get into the process of building this thing. So here is the example that I'm using today. It's a PDF from Apple, new features available with iOS 18 that just came out. So it's got a ton of information here and if you wanted to read all that, be my guest, but I'm gonna just build an agent that is gonna tell us the key highlights basically. So we could ask for highlights or we could ask for a specific question. So in this case, let's say, um, what is iOS smart reply? It's gonna search through that exact PDF that I just showed you guys and it's gonna give us a nice concise answer. So let's see what we get here. The, smart, the iOS smart reply feature assists users in quickly responding to emails, blah, 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 in the mail app, message app. So it's a very, really quick summary. It's very concise and it's better than having to search through here to find what we were looking for, which actually, yeah. Anyways. So I just wanted to show you guys that, but let's just get into the rest of this video. Let's see how we're gonna build this thing. So the resources needed today, N8N, obviously that's where we're gonna be building the workflows to make this agent. Pinecone, this is the vector database tool that I've been using. Um, if you don't really understand vector databases, that's okay. Basically, it is just a way for agents to search through large amount of data much quicker than with a traditional relational database or any other store that you might be pulling information from. So. Google Drive, this is just where the PDF that I'm using is gonna be pulled from. And then OpenAI API, obviously just to access that large language model of OpenAI in order to have the agent think and pull the right information that we need and make it concise. And then as always with everything in life, just have a good attitude. Okay, so push data to Pinecone. Um, that's gonna be the first workflow that we're doing today. And then the second one is going to be the actual agent that's able to pull that data from Pinecone and give us an answer. So let's not waste any more time. Let's just get straight into this one here. Um, so yeah, the first step here would be grab some sort of document that you want, a PDF, um, Word, anything, but just push it into your Google Drive so that we can access it. And then the next step is gonna be, you need to set up a Pinecone index. This will take two seconds. You're gonna go to Pinecone. You're gonna click here, create new index. The name can be whatever, just make sure you understand what it was. So anything, mine is called sample. Really all we need to configure here is just gonna be the model. So we're gonna do text embedding three small. Super simple, that's all we need to do. You can play around with stuff as you sort of understand more about these databases, but for everything I do so far, I've just left it all default. So you're gonna create that index. I'm not gonna do that because I already have one. Like I said, mine is called sample, and then we've got our namespaces here. So. Um, if you watched that last video about creating a simple email AI agent, um, that's what this contacts namespace is from, but we're going to be pushing it into a new one. We'll call it iOS or whatever, but that is basically going to be right here. So that's everything we really need to know about Pinecone for now and setting up the, the database. Now we're going to get into actually building this thing. So the first workflow I said that we were going to be doing is um, pushing the data in, into Pinecone. So we're just going to call this one push data. You're going to want to do trigger manually is the, the event that we're going to use to trigger this workflow. As you can see, there's all these different options. Basically, you need to select what is going to start this workflow. So in this case, if we click test workflow, that's what's going to start the process of the data moving through. So we've got our trigger. Next, we want to go into these node selection and grab Google Drive. Lots of actions here. All we need to do for this one is download the file. So when we test workflow, it's gonna download this file and then we'll be able to see it in N8N. Okay, so a lot of these stuff you're gonna to have to configure, um, or sorry, get set up with credentials if you haven't done it yet. So here's mine, basically for this Google Drive tool, you're gonna to click on create new credential. Um, you need to basically enter a client ID and a client secret in order to let um, NNN know that it has access to get into your drive or vice versa. But if you click open docs, it's gonna be very super simple. It's gonna walk you through exactly what you need to do to get these credentials. You'll go here, you'll create a cloud account. Right here is mine. 
you'll create a project and then really easy, you're just gonna go into en enabled API and services. As you can see, I have these ones down here, but you're just gonna click into here and you'll grab like Google Drive. Search for that. And then you'll see right here, Google Drive API. And all you have to do is enable it. So mine is already enabled, but you'll click a button right here that says enable. Then you're gonna go back into, into here, you'll see credentials. You're gonna create credential, OAuth client ID, and then that is how you're gonna get your client ID and your secret. I'm not gonna open up this right now, but that's basically where you'll find it. So you're, you'll copy and paste that into here, but then with this URL, you have to make sure that you set up your OAuth consent screen. So make sure you go in here and set it up. Um, this is just the one that I have right now. You're gonna add yourself as a test user, otherwise you're not gonna have permission to go back and forth basically. Or you can just publish the, the app. So any of these things, um, but when you're creating your OAuth consent screen, that is where you'll be prompted. It'll say like, where is your redirect, redirect URL? So that's exactly what we're gonna do and copy this right here. But if I didn't explain that well enough, like I said, just click on open docs and you'll see step by step. So go ahead and get that set up and then you'll be prompted to sign in. You should be good to go. Once you get all that set up, you'll be able to access your Google Drive from NNN. So right now we're gonna be grabbing the file type as a resource. We wanna download it and then here, we have a list, URL, or ID. That's how it's gonna access the file. It's really nice that it has a list because you can come in here and just search for exactly what oh, exactly what file you want. So ours is the iOS one, and we want the PDF version. Um, so then you can just test the step here. You'll be able to see exactly like if it's working, what the data looks like as it's coming in. So as you can see, it's coming in right here as binary, and then we want to just view it to make sure that it, it's the right PDF. So. This is exactly what we were looking at earlier, so we're good to go. This step is working. Next, we need to click on this plus button right here, and we wanna add the Pinecone vector store. This is gonna allow us to push it into the vector store so that we can later access it. So again, you're gonna to have to set up your credential. It's gonna ask for an API key. I already have mine set up, so I'm just gonna click on that, but super simple again, in Pinecone, right here, API keys, and you're just gonna copy this value. So you'll just copy that paste it into NNN, and again, you'll be good to go. So operation here, we don't wanna retrieve a document. That might be a later step, but right now we want to insert documents because we're getting it from Drive to Pinecone. Again, we're able to choose from a list, which is super nice, and that shows us that we have been configured properly. So sample, index right here. My index that we're using over here is called sample. So that's good to go, and then you have the option here to add a namespace. I am going to add one just because it is gonna keep our data more organized and it's easier to call it. It also will help the agent figure out exactly what it's looking for once you start to add you know, tons of different data into it. But make sure that it's actually connected from this node to this node. And then next we need to set up a couple more things with this vector store tool. So the first one we wanna set up this default data loader, keep that as default. And then I'm gonna do recursive to recursive character text splitter. Um, I'm gonna leave the chunk size as a thousand because the PDF is pretty big. The chunk size is basically how many characters it's going to pull because it's gonna be pulling in batches from the database. And then the overlap is just how many characters overlap between chunks and I'm just gonna leave that as zero. So I'm gonna go there and then we just need to add the embedding to Pinecone. So open AI and then this is where you'll set up the this credential, I'm pretty sure this is the last one. So again, API key, you'll go into OpenAI and you'll have your API keys right over here on the side and then you're just gonna grab that key, copy it. But yeah, the nice thing about it is once you have everything set up, they'll stay set up. So yeah, you wanna make sure that this embedding is three small because that's how we set up our Pinecone store. And then um, save that, it should be good to go. So if we're gonna hit test workflow, it's gonna start running. We can see that it's going to Google Drive. It's grabbing our PDF. Then it pushed it into Pinecone successfully, I hope, but we can go check right here. Namespace, it should come through here as iOS, since that's what I named it. Let's just refresh that here. Oh, no, I know what happened. Important step, so um, right here, default data loader. We had this as JSON and we need to change this to binary because 
if you remember over here, this data came through as binary. If you go to JSON, there's nothing showing up. So make sure that this, make sure you're aware of how your data is coming through. Because in this case, nothing was being pushed into Pinecone because we didn't set up this loader as binary data. So we can leave all that, save, let's test it again. This should work, otherwise, now I'm lost. So, okay, we're good to go. Namespace, it should push in here. There we go, iOS, perfect. Okay, so we're done with this workflow. We're gonna go back out, we're gonna make a new one, and then this is gonna be our Q&A agent. Okay, the first step is, again, what triggers this workflow. This time we're gonna go on chat message because we wanna chat with this agent to get it to work with us. Leave that blank for now. Okay, now we're gonna add in the actual entity of the agent. So click on this plus, and we're gonna go down to advanced AI. Now you could do a question and answer chain because that's essentially what we want this agent to do, but it's good to get in the habit of setting everything up through an AI agent because then you're able to give it access to more tools um, more scenarios, that sort of thing. So, tools agent, um, all of this can be the same, and eventually we need to add the system message prompt. I'm gonna leave that blank for now, we'll prompt it near the end, but hopefully I don't forget, because sometimes I forget. But, that's the agent. The chat model we're gonna use is OpenAI. We've already got that configured. I'm gonna use 4.0. The memory we're gonna give it is Windows buffer memory. We can leave everything there. It's gonna have five messages of contacts that it's gonna keep, as we keep chatting, it'll keep saving the previous five messages in order to look back and see like how the conversation was going, but we don't have to touch anything really, and that's just a very simple, easy way to give the agent some sort of memory to have a conversational flow. And then tools. So we're gonna go and add Pinecone, or vector store. This is gonna be our iOS um, information. Description, you want to call this tool to access information to answer the user's questions. Just leave it as simple as that. Okay, model, open AS chat model. We pretty much always do this and we always do 4.0. You don't have to always do 4.0. I think uh, 4.0 mini is a little cheaper. Uh, 3.5 works, they all work, but 4.0 just is kind of the most consistent I found, so yeah. Then in the vector store, we wanna add the pine cone. This is again our credential. This time we wanna retrieve documents, we're not inserting. So we did that earlier, now we're retrieving. And then once again from list, sample, and make sure if you pushed it earlier, if you push your data into a namespace over here, so ours is an iOS, make sure that you call that namespace out again. Otherwise, your agent will be a little lost. Okay, so we got that set up. We do need to add the embedding right here again though. Um, and this is gonna be three small because we've done three small throughout every step so far. Okay, save that. Now, okay, I was about to say we're gonna test it, but we need to prompt it because always forget that. So this is, like I said, you're able to take a screenshot of your workspace and put that in the chat and that's super useful in order to actually prompt stuff. So I'm dragging in this one over here. You can see I did this earlier, but let's just go ahead and do that again. So there's that screenshot. I'm going to say prompt this agent to answer questions from, from the user. We want to include, geez, I cannot type today. Include background, context, and instructions. Also, tell the agent to answer concisely. Okay. So, if you guys know stuff about agents, or at least a little bit about agents, if you know about prompting, prompting is super, super important to ensuring your agent is working consistently and working exactly the way you want it to. A lot of times if it's erroring, it might be an issue just with the prompting rather than an actual thing you set up in the tool. So this is not the way I would advise to 
prompt your agents um, if they're complicated and if it's like a big high stakes project. But when you're playing around with making agents this quick way, it works super well. So background and context, we've got our models, we've got our tools. Um, it's got instructions, so let's let's throw this into here and we'll test it out and see see what see if we like it or not. Okay, and we'll save that. So let's see what we want to ask it about. Let's ask about what Genmoji is since we're in the AI space right now. What is iOS 18 Genmoji? Genmoji is a feature introduced in iOS 18 that enables users to create unique Genmoji style stickers directly from the keyboard. Dog on a surfboard. Cool. Um, let's see what else can we ask it. Let's go. Can you give a summary of coolest features in iOS 18? This may not work because I don't know how it's going to. Well, it probably will, but it needs to think about what does coolest mean. So let's see what it gives us here. Oh, wow. The iOS 18 introduces several cutting edge features designed to enhance user convenience, accessibility, and overall experience. Here's a summary of the coolest features. Eye tracking, pretty cool. Music haptics, also pretty cool. Wow, yeah. Genmoji's number seven on the cool list. I would say that's probably top five, but that's really not what this video is about. Okay, so that's all that this agent's gonna be doing for us today. I know that it was pretty simple, but hopefully you understand all the aspects of what goes into it, all the tools, what they each do. It's super important to get that basic understanding down because then you can go in here and you can start adding more tools and you can start calling more workflows and then you can start pushing data off of the agent or pushing data from agent to a different agent. So just wanted to help give you guys a basic understanding and if you enjoyed, you know, please let me know what, you, what else you wanna see. Um, I'm gonna try to be tailoring a lot of content, content super step-by-step, -step, um, super easy to follow and to beginners. So. If that sounds like something that you enjoy, then definitely stick around. But besides that, thanks guys.